and this didn't come out for a long time, but we always thought that something was a foul there at the medical examiner's office. It came out, and you probably remember this, is that the medical examiner in Connecticut was feeding body parts to her Doberman pincers in the autopsy rooms. I can't even put my mind around that. Yes. It, it, I, I can't even imagine the kind of ghouls that work in your business. You don't work there anymore, do you? Corrupt the system was during that time. And, and to think, I mean, this thing smells so rotten from the top down. It, it, you know, it, If someone is found dead in a hotel bedroom, isn't there an automatic requirement of an investigation and autopsy? How can you say he died of a heart attack? That idiot Cinderella said it? She can't even pronounce the word myocardial. You know, Michael, we had, we had a case once of, a, of an elderly woman who died in a convalescent uh, hospital, and the police came down in the preparation room to ask us questions. If they, they saw any hemostasis on the body that looked unusual, like fingerprint marks or anything, because they were trying to figure out whether that she died naturally or she died by rough handling of a nurse's aide or a nurse or something like that. So now you got the left wingers blogging onto my Facebook account saying, nonsense like this is why libertarians will never be taken seriously. From the birth of theories to 9 11, all an inside job, then Breitbart was poisoned by the left, and now the same story with Scalia. That's all irrelevant, Ron, because the law requires an investigation, is the point, doesn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and without question, I mean, uh, when, when you realize that you've been in the business and you've seen this, you know, on the ground, you're in a funeral home, and the slightest, slightest infraction of something, you have the police coming down to the funeral home, looking at the body, you trying to pinpoint anything that they're asking, seeing if there's a mark on the body, if there's a scar, if there's a cut, if the eyelids look okay, if the inside of the gums look okay, and, and you have to show them this. And for them not to do this for such a person of high authority and and high standing is just beyond my, my comprehension. The first thing that a homicide investigator asks if a man is found dead in his bed, if he's an ordinary salesman who died, is who would have benefited from his death? Is there an insurance policy? Let's see it. Who are the beneficiaries? Let's call them up. Isn't that true? Absolutely. Absolutely. Without now, he is the highest, the highest judge in the land who just killed a trillion-dollar-a-year business for the... For the um, Gangster left in the green business. They're making more money on green rackets than they ever made in importing drugs. And you wonder why he was dead six days later? I don't believe it was suicide. Do you? Michael, nothing surprises me anymore with this administration. Well, I think I'll do this until um, uh, July, uh, uh, July 4th. What if I did the same show every day was Scalia murdered? I can guarantee you that this subject will not die whether I do it or not. This is not going to die. It's going to get bigger. This is impossible. We're waiting for a foreign press organization to come and investigate this because the American press is dead. If anything proved that there is no press in America, it's this case. There is no press in America. I'll be right back. All right, so nothing's going to happen. You sure? Let's move on. Who stands to gain by his death? Well, you can pretty much add it up. The whole Democrat Party. The entire New World Order. Who stands to lose by his death? Half the American population, mainly those that earn money and pay taxes. Those who actually can think stand to lose. No autopsy, no toxicology, no investigation. The Senate is not in session right now. And there's no press. Now, irrespective of the pillow, let's say he slept with a pillow over his eyes to keep out the light, just for the sake of discussion. It still, by law, requires an, an autopsy and investigation. If an ordinary Joe Blow dies in a hotel room, I'm sorry, that's the first thing they do. They don't listen to the family, no one else. Bingo, that's it. See, the first thing I heard, the first thing I thought of when I, when I heard this, I almost fainted. I thought of all the people who had uh, uh, died of natural causes under the Clinton administration. That's all. I didn't say that had anything to do with it. All right, what else? You want me to... So the Senate's in recess right now. 
No Republicans, no crews, nobody, nothing. His family doesn't want a medical examination. Nothing. And there's no investigation. None. We're not supposed to even ask. Took hours for authorities in remote West Texas to find a justice of the peace. When they found the idiot, Cinderella, she pronounced Scalia dead of something she couldn't even pronounce. Myocardial menarchin. Myocardial Strange things are happening. Strange things are happening. People do die in their sleep. It happens at 29, 19, 39. He was over the average U.S. life expectancy. All true. But he's not an ordinary man. Not an ordinary man. No, my friend. He was an extraordinarily important man. It would behoove anyone with a mind that considers itself in, uh, in some ways an intelligent or inquiring mind to at least put these questions to rest. Some of the questions can't be answered anymore, which means that they're covering something up. They disposed of all his bodily fluids already in the toilet. Why? To make sure that there would be no toxicological investigation. So that's number one. Now waiting in the wings is the pickle man. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. All right, let's review all the suspicious deaths during Obama's reign so far. Remember SEAL Team 6, those who died in a helicopter, was shot down under suspicious circumstances and there was a mock hearing? Forgot that? Remember a man named Jack Wheeler, head of cybersecurity, leaves a meeting with one shoe on, staggering, then his body is found in a garbage dumpster in Washington, D.C.? That was, that was so shocking I put it into my book. Um, I think it was a time for war. That was under Bush, by the way, I believe. You know, things are happening that are odd. So let's talk about what's happening right now. The, the Pope is on the border with Mexico, stirring up the illegal aliens to storm the border and invade our country. The troublemaking Marxist Pope, who I affectionately call Lenin's Pope in Government Zero, the finest chapter ever written about this corrupt politician in uh, vestments, has the nerve to come here and try to flood America with illegal aliens. At the same time that the Pope is stirring up a further invasion of America from the South, the stooge in the Department of Homeland Security, who should have been fired after the terrorist event in San Bernardino, he's still there, by the way, Jay Johnson, former Wall Street lawyer, incidentally. We hear so much about Wall Street and how evil it is. Wall Street lawyers and how deceitful they are. Jay Johnson is a Wall Street lawyer. He's the Department of Homeland Security. He's let one terrorist event after another go without investigation of his own office. Listen what Jay Johnson says in clip 14. It's astonishing. We recognize that more border security and deportations may deter illegal migration, but they do not, they do nothing to overcome the push factors that prompt desperate people to flee Central America in the first place. What a We're liar. We're preparing to offer vulnerable individuals fleeing liar the you. violence in Central America a safe and legal alternative path Can to you a better life. This? We're expanding our refugee admissions Can you program believe this? to help vulnerable men, women, and children in Central Shut America up! who qualify as refugees. We're partnering with the UN High Commissioner for Refugees on non and non-governmental organizations in the region to do this as soon as possible. He's about as intelligent as Cinderella. When I hear the word vulnerable people, vulnerable men and women, I want to scream. Because there's no one more vulnerable than the American people right now to this gangster regime. We are the most vulnerable people on the planet. We have no protection. We have no party representing our interests. We just lost the Supreme Court. And this goofball, Jay Johnson, says he's going to let these people flood in because they have to leave violence in Central America. And what do you think they're going to bring here, Jay? What do you think they're going to bring here, Jay? They're going to bring disease and violence, Jay. And who's going to pay for them, Jay? you got veterans rotting in hallways, Mr. Johnson. But he was put there the same way the judge was put there in Texas. He's a mouthpiece. They may as well call him Cinderella Johnson. In fact, we're going to call Jay Johnson of Department of Homeland Security Cinderella Johnson from now on. He has a glass slipper. It's, uh, there's no joke. This is really no joke anymore. It's getting sicker by the day. 
So you want to talk about it or you want to move on? Nothing more to see here. Let's see what other stories there are. We have, I'm going to talk about this a little bit more, maybe another month, until we find out more about the suspicious reasons for no autopsy, throwing the bodily fluids in the toilet, declaring him dead of a heart attack, then changing it. We're going to keep talking about it until eventually a foreign press organization comes to America and investigates this. I'd like to see a thousand foreign press I'd like to see a thousand cameras from around the world conver converge on that ranch. I'd like to see a thousand cameras outside that ranch. France, Japan, China, Russia, wherever. And, and ask the questions that need to be asked because we have no press. We've lost the press completely. I mean, I thought it was bad. I didn't know it was this bad. Now, we go back to the election itself. And we have this strange man named Newt Gingrich who destroyed Romney in the last election by calling him every name under the sun. It was Newt Gingrich, remember, who destroyed Romney's president, a chance to be president. Newt Gingrich, the fool, who pretended he could be president with his trombone-playing wife, Callista, appearing like a, like, a, like a jerk, day and night, attacking Romney. He didn't stop. He destroyed Romney. Listen what Mr. Holywater has to say in clip 13. I wish Trump would drop all of the personal ad hominem things which he seems to enjoy so much. I think it weakens the country, I think it weakens him, I think it makes us look stupid. Uh, and I'm not defending Cruz or anybody else, I'm just saying, no. I, I think the whole politics of this kind of personal stuff is almost deranged. It makes no sense to me to spend this kind of time on this kind of personality stuff. But it was you, Fatso, who did it to Romney. What are you talking about, you slob, you? You don't like ad hominem? I'll give you a little more ad hominem. What are you kidding me? You you spent months attacking Romney in the most disgusting ways, Newt. Now you're making believe you're above it all? There's only one reason Newt Gingrich is doing this. He has an imagined sense of self-importance, which is confirmed by Fox News. He has an imagined idea that people still respect him. And he goes on with the imaginary idea that people are not going to remember what he did to Romney. But the fact of the matter is, he did it to Romney, the very thing that Trump is doing to the opposition. Because he's got he's to break out. And the only reason Gingrich is doing this is because he represents the rhinos. Gingrich is the rhino party. Gingrich is the Republican party. Gingrich is speaking for Bush. Gingrich is speaking only for Bush, Bush three. Gingrich speaks for the establishment. Gingrich is the establishment. Gingrich is an untrustworthy soul. And he really should spend the rest of his life studying the trombone. Now let's take some calls. What now? Oh, look at this caller from WJR. Mike, go ahead. What's your topic? Yeah, my father passed away. Uh, it was really eerie when this happened to Justice Scalia. Uh, my father passed away in the same way in a hotel by himself, died in his sleep, and um, we were notified. Uh, my younger brother actually found him. He was going to check up on him, and we... Uh, for one thing, the police wouldn't even let us in the hotel room while he was still oh, oh, there you go. Bingo. That's right. You wouldn't be allowed in. Number two. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. They wouldn't even let you near the corpse, right? No, no, not. Not at all. And he was going through a divorce with his third wife. And the when they finally did, we got to see him, and they took him away. The coroner's office took him away. My uh, stepmother didn't want a toxicology done on him and they said they had to do one oh. about any foreplay at all uh foul play i'm sorry yeah sorry i think you hit the nail on the head with the first one <laughs> <laughs> at least you can still at least you can still have a, a fond memory of your father yeah i mean he was quite a bit younger than the justice but uh um, i mean I, I guarantee you'd rather remember him having uh the former rather than the latter Exactly, yeah. I wish he would have <laughs> through the divorce with the one he married that time, though. All right, but the, the, the important part of your call is, is not missed on me, nor the audience. It didn't matter that your brother went there and didn't want an autopsy. It was required by law. They wouldn't even let your brother near your father's corpse, right? Because he was found dead in a hotel room. Not even under suspicious circumstances. He was just found alone in a hotel room. It's standard procedure in any city in America. You name any hotel in this country, from the highest to the lowest, if a person is found dead in that room, bingo, yellow tape, no one gets near, right? 
Exactly. That's exactly what they did. They, they, you know, 